So now we have a good idea of what um, host open hardware is and why we need to do it. So let's just go through a background of the different standards out there and how they all work together. So the, an open hardware standards background. How did these come to be? Well, they came through an initiative from the government. So the initiative drove a need for these standards. Um, what the standards do is they give you objectivity to how to meet this MOSA initiative, this Modular Open System Architecture Initiative. All right, so just because there's an initiative saying you need to use open architectures in your systems, it's um, very subjective. How does one do this? Well, this is where the standards really shine, right? They give you objectable requirements that allow you to say, if you're going to follow these open architecture standards, you know that your system uh, meets all the illities and the benefits of open architectures. Without the standard, you really have no way of proving that you're meeting an open architecture initiative. So Navair saw that there was this initiative put out and they funded the host program to generate an open hardware standard for their system acquisition efforts. And separately, Army, the C5, what's now C5A, C5 ISR, it was C4S ISR at the time, they created a CMOS standard to define hardware interfaces as well. So GTRI was funded by our sponsor, Navair, and was tasked to do a trace study to figure out what technology should we focus on. And we did a trace study between VME, Compact PCI, and VPX. Uh, did an entire market survey and found out VPX is a clear leader. So decided the first host core technology is going to be based off, or was going to be based off of VPX. And as a note, CMOS, completely separately, also went with VPX as well. And now, as it's evolved, there's become a DOD-wide effort to align these standards. Right? Both host and CMOS are using VPX modules and creating VPX interfaces. And so why can't we combine these into a more tri-service approach? So SOSA came along, and they incorporated a lot of the interfaces defined in host and CMOS. And this same standard has, is agreed upon and leveraged across now the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy. And just a little more detail on these open hardware standards. So what they're all leveraging is OpenVPX. OpenVPX is an industry standard, part of the Vita community. And it, really what it does is it allows um, industry vendors to come and say, here's a profile, here's an interface, I'd like you to throw it into your standard so it's publicly available. And what that has ended up doing is standardizing on over 100 different specific prof, uh, slot profiles. So you can go in and you can just leverage OpenVPX, but there's no guarantee that one system may leverage you know, SVC Profile 5 and one may leverage SVC Profile 50, and they're not going to be able to interface with each other. You're not going to be able to reuse them. And um, so they're not really open. Now, Host and SOSA came along, and these are led by government, academia, and industry all together. And um, they, select, they down selected from these hundreds of slot profiles down to two to three basic profiles for single board computers. There are other profiles to do other uh, functionality. So some comparisons kind of went through OpenVPX already, but it was developed with limited integrator and government participation. And there's a lot of slot profiles, over 100. It does standardize on some backplanes but it's very industry-centric. SOSA has a lot of government and industry representatives. It's an open consortium, and it's standardized on a subset of OpenVPX slot profiles. It's very sensor-centric, but it's an entire system solution. Right? So it includes software, hardware, and electromechanical interface, such as the front panel 38999s for a lot of the system. Um, Host, on the other hand, is purely government controlled, but it does take industry input. It's also standardized on a subset of VPX profiles. It started out as a mission processor centric uh, standard. Host has what is a tier three specification and component registry, which we'll get into later. And um, currently it's on version 4.0 and actually has some implementations in progress, such as on the JSF core mission processor. 
Host provides a, also provides a framework to enter new core technologies, such as other things other than VPX, into the host standard. Right now there is um, a major initiative for the host and SOSA to align, the standards to align. And how that's done is decisions, they do go through SOSA and they go through a rigorous discussion and voting between many parties. Right, you have the government, you have industry, they're all debating on what should go into the standard. This can, this can take a very long time. Um, decisions that we believe are applicable to the hardware module interfaces uh, then are flowed back into host as well as host can take in any type of um, recommendations from industry directly as well or any of the host adopters and so and then feed that back into the SOSA standard. So that helps the compatibility between the standards to be maintained. Right. So now that we've gotten a background of these different standards, let's really dig into the details of the host standard. So the host standard. First, let's get an understanding of some important host documents. What you have are the host tier one. Uh, this is the main overarching architecture and framework that host defines. You have host tier two, which focuses on individual technologies. And then there's a host tier three, which are actual specifications for modules. So they have interface and performance definitions. Um, from the document perspective that are available, there's host tier three guides and outline available, as well as written examples of tier threes. And there's also the host open VPX and host PC 104 verification methods documents. Those each have a CVAM or conformance verification applicability matrix. And essentially what the CVAM is, is a list of all the requirements within the host standard and allows a user to get an idea of which specific module type does each requirement apply to. And that really helps when you're writing a tier three and flowing requirements down into your actual electronic components. So the host standard. The host standard has three tiers. It has the tier one, which define the core tenets of the entire host framework. You have the tier two, defining core technologies and applying those core tenets of tier one to the core technologies. And then tier three, which are very specific component specifications, defining actual components with performance requirements uh, for your system. So you get a better, better idea of how all these documents exist in the standard framework. At the top, you have that tier one core tenant standard, out of which can be multiple tier twos, so it allows for some expansion when different technologies are needed, potentially within your system. They can expand to another tier two. And then underneath the tier twos are a lot of tier threes, and those will be the actual components that meet the interface requirements within a tier two. And those all kind of sit down in a host component registry that's accessible so different um, program offices, different integrators can go in and see which tier three specifications exist and which components exist that meet those specifications. Um, one thing to note is the tier threes, they actually incorporate spec uh, performance specifications based on the product. So as you can see, the one line that's pointing out into the uh, from the design process on the right is into the tier three, so they feed in your actual requirements, actual performance requirements from the system.